I'm now going to say a few words on how to prove the multiplication rule for the limit of sequences. So what does this proposition say? It says that if a n goes to l and b n goes to m as n goes to infinity, this implies that a n times b n goes to l times m as n goes to infinity. I'm not going to give the entire proof, but I'm going to tell you how to start. So as in the proof for the addition theorem, we need to keep track of what we know and what we want to prove here. And as always, or as before, we know these two guys. So we know that for every epsilon one, there exists an n one such that when n has passed n one, we have a n minus l smaller than epsilon one. And similarly here for the bn's, there exists an n two such that when n has passed n two, uh, b n minus m is smaller than epsilon. Two. And the point now is to show that this implies that for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists an n such that when n has passed capital N, a n times b n minus l times m is smaller than epsilon. And as in this addition film, we need to emphasize that these epsilons play, epsilons and n's here play different roles. So let's make these all green. And the point here is that this we know, so we know that whatever numbers we put here, one, a half, or green epsilon, because at the start of the proof, we need to assume that this guy here is fixed, but unknown. So we're assuming, as in every proof where we, where we want to establish a limit using the definition, we start out by assuming that he is a given, fixed, but unknown quantity. Then our goal is to find this guy. And how do we find this guy? Well, we find him by considering this. Well, the level of difficulty of this proof is higher than for the addition rule and the squeeze theorem because you need to, uh, so your tool is basically that you know this. So if you get a n minus l alone or b n minus m alone, you can bound it by whatever constant you want it's because for every epsilon, this inequality is true. Now, the thing is, so you need to relate this expression here to these things. There's a nice little trick which I'm now, now going to give with which you can do this. And the trick is, so if we consider this, so we start with computing a n b n minus l m, then we can add by zero in a clever way. And the clever way is to take one of these guys, let's say the a n's, and then the other guy from here. So if I took the a n's here, I'm going to take the m here. And then I add this again. I could take b n times l. It would work in the same way because now I can factor inside of here, so I can take the a n outside, and suddenly I have b n minus m, so this guy I'm able to bound, and then I can factor m here, then I have a n minus l here, and that guy I know something about. And then I can use triangle inequality to get this, and then I'm in business. So your mission now is to figure out how to choose these guys, so that when I take this and this away, I'm going to end up with the epsilon here. Now this requires one extra step. So I'm leaving this as a challenge to figure out, but it's related to the fact that in the epsilons, you're only allowed to put constants. So you're not allowed to put anything depending on n inside of the epsilons here. So whatever epsilon is, this holds, but it has to be constant, meaning it's not allowed to depend on n. So that's the difficulty here to work around that. 